Stephen King once said, I have seen the future of horror and its name is Clive Barker. That's high praise from one of the greatest horror authors of all time, but Clive Barker is clearly no slouch either. While the majority of the people in the world may not recognize Clive Barker's name like they would Stephen King's, horror fans know Barker and his work well. He's responsible for two great long-running franchises in Hellraiser and Candyman. Starting as a playwright and making around 14 plays, he quickly focused on writing when his short stories started taking off. His first publication was The Books of Blood, a collection of gruesome short stories, many of which would later be adapted to film. Barker was a growing name in the mid-80s and people started making movies based off his stories. These early attempts were awful and Barker was so displeased with how they turned out that he took over directing roles for his next movie, Hellraiser. And it was a huge hit, skyrocketing Barker's career as a multi-talented artist and visionary. Pinhead has become one of the most recognizable horror icons, a design that is almost as popular as Freddy, Jason, Michael, and Leatherface. Barker's success, though, would not last long. While the Hellraiser and Candyman series were going strong without Barker behind the camera, the other films Barker directed began to bomb at the box office and were deemed flops among fans. Soon, studios began to look at Barker's work as a financial risk, and decades would pass without any big films being based on his stories. Sure, little projects would pop up from time to time, but no studio wanted to put in serious dollars into something that would probably lose money. So whatever happened to Barker? What happened to the future of horror? His career was looking so bright so early on, but it soon fizzled out. Stephen King is continuing to make box office draws like the Boogeyman, but Clive Barker's name is barely mentioned anymore. Stephen King also wrote this about Barker in the mid 80s. Barker is not merely good, he is great. Not great in the way mainstream critics are liable to appreciate for a good many years. Not great in a way academicians are ever going to like very much, but great in the only way that matters. He doesn't just have the goods, he is the goods. Based on that, maybe the world wasn't ready for Barker, what he represented, or the visions he had. I'm going to take a look back and review all of Barker's feature-length films, the ones he directed and the ones that were inspired by his work. I want a complete understanding of who Barker is as a writer and as a director, and to hopefully gain more appreciation for him along the way. So join me starting on October 1st as I review at least two of these films each week throughout the month of October. I present to you The Fall of Clive Barker, The Films of Blood.